Hello, everyone, and welcome to another presentation in our ongoing Rallyware webinar series. Today, we're excited to be able to bring to you two special guests, Dave Turcott and George Elfond. So a few housekeeping details before we begin. I want you to know that we are recording today's session so that we can share the link with you later this week. Our plan for today is that after our presenters have shared their insights, we will open up the forum to questions from you. So that means as you listen, please enter any questions you might have that you would like addressed at the end and we'll get to, many, to as many of those as time allows. So now we know because of COVID, we've all been forced to make the transition to remote work. The question is, how can we make sure that those individuals working from home are efficient and productive? In other words, can we just survive or how can we better yet thrive in this new paradigm? So to begin with, I would like to introduce Dave Turcott. He is the CEO and founder of IOXO. And it's a company that we've discovered recently that is just unique in the market at being a simple, secure, and cost-effective solution for remote work. So Dave, thank you so much for being with us today. And uh, I will let you take it away. Well, thanks very much. Um, I, I really um, just want to start by expressing you know, my gratitude for being here with you today and really extend first and a, spe you know, a special thank you to all of, our, all of our heroes, the healthcare workers and first responders who are out on the front lines of this crisis and really saving lives every day. So you know, thanks to every one of you and you know, also who are staying at home and going through a great deal of distress you know, to protect one another. Um, I also want to thank our friends at Rallyware uh, for putting all of this together to discuss this rapidly emerging shift that we are we are experiencing the the work from home you know work remote reality this this rapid change we're all being forced to em you know embrace remains in flux almost day to day you know so much is happening so fast in the business world and and we are all you know we're all in this together and I really appreciate Rallyware's leadership and understanding that getting everyone prepared and on top of working remotely will serve us all and really help us come out the other side of this thing prospering so so thank you for this opportunity to be here with you and thanks for your leadership uh, Rallyware you know really this this really is a new awakening you know there is a, a paradigm what we're calling this paradigm shift to remote work one of the things you know, this COVID-19 crisis really revealed how vulnerable we were to the current approach to work and productivity, and really how there was an immediate need for remote work capabilities that a lot of businesses just weren't prepared for. And, you know, and when, when that happens, you know, the consequences are, sure, a lot of companies or a lot of businesses or ourselves, we're, we, we lose productivity, but for a lot of people, it meant that businesses couldn't work that way and, and a lot of people lost their jobs. So there was a lot of harm, you know, that resulted from this transition or during this transition. And so there really is a new normal. And I'm sort of reminded of now, I think we're all more aware of things like, you know, it's no longer appropriate to sort of power through the flu or the cold and go into the office and share that with everyone because it may not make me sick, but you know, we might, you know, bring that home to someone who's caring for an elderly parent and, and, and uh, causing, could cost them their lives. So there's a whole bunch of realizations and learning happening right now that I think people are coming to, to grips with the fact that things just have to change, you know. And one of those big issues is, you know, that computing and productivity can really no longer be tied to the office, you know. Uh, you know, up to now, it's always been, you know, probably your fastest computer, all your files, all of your data you know, everything was tied to the office, you know, to go get the high paying jobs, you had to go to the, the big urban centers where, you know, a lot of those larger companies had the resources and had the opportunities. And that's just sort of been the way it's been in the past. Everything was at the office. And if you, if you worked at home or you traveled or you were on the road or, 
of moving around, you, you probably wouldn't have all of your resources. You know, you wouldn't have all your files, everything that you need to be productive. And, uh, and, and that's something that, you know, is one of the great things that has to change during this process. And that's really why we're talking about that today. How do we change that normal? so that you get the same productivity tools and resources no matter where you are, you know? And so that, that has lots of implications for, you know, what your office looks like, what your home office looks like, and, and, and all of those things are going to change. But, you know, when you think about what I've called, you know, this migration to remote work, it's, it's really been going on already for several years. What I've called the great cloud migration is, is already underway and pretty much everything's going to get there. You know, if you think about, you know, if, if you listen to, if you watch movies on Netflix, if you stream with Hulu, if you have, if you use QuickBooks to do your taxes, if you have, you know, Gmail, social media, all of these things are tools that are, that are in the cloud and that were little applications that were moving to the cloud and people have been sort of piecemealing little bits and parts of it to help them be more productive or just improve their overall lives. But, but uh, you know, that transition already began and the, the migration of your actual working computer your your actual desktop laptop tools to the cloud where all those applications are is sort of that that last shoe to drop in what is happening now and happening really fast so that you know this this whole work remote flexibility you know work remote capability is, is no longer a luxury it's a need, it's a requirement for all of those businesses that they have to incorporate into this new normal and uh, to make sure that their working teams can keep working during situations like this, stay productive, but adapt and be competitive and, and thrive where, where others may not. So, so all these office spaces and work environments are going to change and, and uh, that's a big part of what's happening to all of us right now. So when we talk about the challenges of working from home, you know, it's really important that, and one of the things that we see in our business is that part of the awakening is, is that your, your personal computer and your personal apps are not the same as business. You know, like I said before, you're already streaming movies, you're already streaming music and applications for personal entertainment. You know, you've got some applications for your work project, your emails and those kinds of things. But businesses have concerns that individuals don't have. I mean, businesses have legal and compliance or security risks that individuals don't have to address if it's just your personal information, your personal photos you're sharing with family and friends. But that's not true of businesses. So, you know, th th there's, there's real challenges that if you're conducting business, you really have to have different, more secure, compliant resources that an individual person doesn't. And that's a real challenge. You know, there's another challenge that some people don't even have. I mean, the assumption is not everybody working has resources at home or real computers at home or abilities to do, have enough resources to, to have all of those applications. Everyone has mobile phones, but some applications and things are difficult, difficult to run on mobile phones. And so a lot of times businesses have a challenge with sending everyone home because they don't know what's at home and what everybody has at home is completely different in terms of laptops and mobile devices and iPads and those things. So those are real challenges you know, that we have to think about. And one of, the, one of the big issues that comes down to when you're using these, all of these different applications, whether it's Microsoft Word or Slack or, you know, all the, the email applications that we use, it's easy to get to those from any device, but the problem businesses have to address is security. And security is the, is the big one that we really care about. And when you talk about normal laptops and computers, you, you just can't send people home with a regular laptop or devices because all of that company data, and this is where the security is, this, this work from home remote thing has real challenges for businesses, is that you can't put the golden eggs of the business on the devices that go home. Every single one of those devices at home traditionally is where the security risks are. If you lose that iPad, if you lose that laptop or all those kinds of things, that endpoint where th that data is stored where you're consuming those applications it just creates all kinds of problems at home that you don't have in the office. I mean, there's some scary truths and facts out there, like almost every Wi-Fi router that's out there that people use for their home and even the office have been made vulnerable to some kind of attack and the vast majority of them are all at home with the default settings that every hacker knows. So what that means is if you're working from home, 
and you use sensitive data, it's very, very easy for even low level hackers to hack those at home networks. So businesses really have to worry about what are we doing in the home because we don't have control over those working environments. And those are real heavy challenges that, that businesses have to deal with. And so even though they want access to the apps and the resources, how do we do that to make sure that everyone's got hardware that we trust? And how do we do that without compromising security and compromising you know, what those businesses do to be productive, but not put the entire business at risk? And, and that's kind of you know, where we sort of focused. And you know, what's, that some, you know, what's that most secure way to do that? In, in our view, it's, it's like I said, that last shoe to drop, all your apps are already there, is now your computer is gonna live in the cloud. And there's lots of names for this. It's desktop as a service or, but I, I always like to give this analogy when people say, well, what do you, what do you mean my computer is going to live in the cloud? Well, if you think about it this way, it's like compare old computing, that computer that's on that desk, that laptop that you've got, that's, imagine that being blockbuster video, okay? That's where everything is local to you. The data is on the video or the DVD or whatever that thing is that sits in front of you. And what we're talking about is, Netflix. So now you're talking about streaming your computer. So just like you can stream a movie and watch that movie on your TV, you can stream and interact with your computer and stream it to any device that you like. Okay. So, you know, so that's really a basic analogy of that your, the brains of your computer, your CPU is now going to live in the cloud. And so when your computing is all in the cloud, you're not having to manage local devices what you have at home. It's just in the cloud and you just decide where you want to stream it or the business does. So in terms of what you're doing and what you're experiencing, the great thing is it's exactly like the computer that you have now. There's no difference in the applications. They're all Microsoft applications or Google and G Suite and all those great productivity apps that George is going to talk about later. Those are all applications that look and feel exactly the same as they've always felt to you. So there isn't a learning curve there. You don't have to learn how to new, use a new computer. You know, uh, it's, it's, it's incredibly easy to do. And, and for all of us, it's just, it, it gives us a lot of great flexibility. You would have access to all of the same applications and the documents. So unlike the old world that we're used to, in this new world, everything that you have in the office, all your applications, documents, files, shared resources, Anything that you've used now is completely available and is, is com identical to the resources that you have in the office. In fact, the way to think about it is that as a business, you set up these cloud hosted virtual desktops or cloud computers, you set them up for your employees and they're all accessing that desktop wherever they are, whenever they are. And it's very, very easy to deploy and then the, the local devices no longer matter and those early risks that we've talked about about endpoint data no longer matter you know the beautiful thing about once this is built and set up when you talk about easy to deploy in a situation like this our customers or any any business that has cloud hosted virtual computers or virtual desktops ready to go and set up when it was time to go home they just went home there was no setup no configuration no big integrations that had to happen moving files around they just they just went home and you know for a lot of our customers we have some you can make that very easy nobody has to buy new laptops i'm sure many of you heard of companies scrambling around and buying laptops and sending people home none of that would have happened no costs would have, would be incurred in this world because we work on things called thin clients and to not get too technical but thin clients are things that all they really do is connect to the internet and connect you back to your cloud hosted virtual computers and desktops and so they're not an actual computer themselves and so there's no local all those issues of local data are gone so it's an incredible increase in security because you've eliminated that single greatest risk of endpoint data and company data being on devices at your house it eliminates all of that but you still get access to using everything right so there's no local data or files to worry about and you stream your PC, you stream your computer so that you can use it and experience it and interact with it and get all your work done. And when you log out and go away, there's nothing left behind that puts your business at risk. So that's a big advantage of why we think virtual computers are what the future is.
Now, when you're talking about setting up this cloud computing, traditionally, this is a very difficult thing to do, in particular for small businesses, but it's also something that has been around for a while. This isn't brand new technology. This is technology that the biggest companies in the world have been using for years for security. Okay, you know, when you talk about federal government agencies talking about the Fortune 500, in fact, most banking and financial institutions use cloud based computing or virtual desktops or VDI. And it's incredibly more secure for the reasons that we've talked about. But then the reason is, well, well, why is it hard for small businesses? And the reason why is this requires a lot of sophisticated full-time IT staff. You've got to have real professionals with, and these aren't the basic IT guy that, we, that we've often met, which is usually the cousin that we met at the barbecue that knows how to plug in routers and things like that. These are people that are trained computer scientists and engineers that work with servers in big giant data centers. And it takes a lot of sophistication and training to pull this off. The other part is, is that VDI or virtual desktops or cloud computing requires that you know how to use big, expensive server hardware. And, you know, when you're talking about setting, you know, no one can afford, I mean, who can afford to spend tens of thousands of dollars to set up a small business of 10 or 15 people or 50 people. So for small businesses, pulling off cloud computing is just expensive typically as it has been for the big enterprises. So what you've seen is cloud computers, all throughout the upper 10, 15% of the market, and everybody, the rest of us, has been stuck with the old paradigm and struggling with those challenges and not able to make that final leap to the cloud. You know, The other thing is, in our experience, what happened was when we worked with some customers that wanted to give this whole cloud computing a try, well, then the challenge was, well, well who can support that? So again, you're going into areas where you have incredibly it's complicated technology that requires a lot of really expensive hardware. And then you have to pay someone how to manage that hardware so you can consume that technology. And all of that hassle of managing that infrastructure and then managing devices uh, has, has been really prohibitive and difficult for small businesses. And usually it's overwhelming. And by this time in the conversation is when most of us, our eyes are rolling back in our head as we have these technical, <laughs> you know, difficult technical conversations and, and most people just continue to do what they've done because it's just the easiest path forward for them. Uh, the, the cost and complication makes managing the cloud and all those local resources that you'd have to manage in traditional cloud computing just far too complicated and expensive. And so that's why many small businesses have never had the opportunity to exploit this technology. And I think so when you talk about IOXO and our role in this, it's, it really comes down to, you know, we look at this and saying, well, when we formed our company and we said, wow, this, this cloud computing is fantastic. This cloud computing technology has so many security advantages, so many, you know, eliminates so many management hassles, but we have to figure out how to make it easy for any size organization, large or small, to be able to have this technology. And I think for us, we, we like to say that we even the playing field. And so we wrote a lot of software and built a, comp, you know, a platform that really makes it easy for everyone to, to get the benefits of these technologies and to make this shift to remote work no longer difficult. And so when you talk about most businesses, we assume our customers don't really even have IT staff. If you're under 100 people or 50 people in an office, this kind of, you know, this kind of technology has never been made available to you really because it's too expensive to adopt and too complicated and too expensive to manage. So we built our company and our philosophy around the assumption that, hey, everybody needs security. Everybody needs these computing resources, but we've got to make it easy for everyone. And we have to assume, and we believe, that having complicated large IT staffs shouldn't be a requirement for people to do your core business. If you're teaching, selling real estate, you know, involved in law, accounting, all of these other businesses, healthcare workers, and, you know, all of the people that are in these small businesses selling, you know, whatever they're doing to, to, to advance their own personal goals, they shouldn't also have to be IT professionals that get this technology. See, we wanted to make it easy. And that's what our focus was, was making sure that it was plug and play easy for all of our customers. So you guys can punch above your weight and have all the resources of big enterprise 
just and because you're a small business you can you can work with and work remote with the best of them so that was kind of our focus as a company was to make sure that everybody had the opportunity and it was easy to adopt the technology so when you talk when you, so, when you go ahead dave i'm sorry yeah no yeah so uh, i want no i was actually say the the next slide i think we're we're good to go for the next one yeah so a couple of things um you know so this new way to be productive and i think this is this new reality um you know like i said i think from the very beginning it's clear that you can't run businesses now without the ability to be in the office when you need to be in the office but you also got to work it from home and you can't miss a beat when things like this COVID-19 crisis happen. And one of the great things I know George is going to talk about is, you know, you know, some of these fantastic applications and specific tools, but you know, there's a, there's a lot of myths amount around, you know, remote work productivity that just aren't true. Like a lot of studies and people have seen that people are just as productive when they work at home or when in the office, when if, if you give them the right tools and you enable them quickly and easily, that businesses don't have to suffer with productivity when people go home. You know, a lot of times you find people measuring productivity and deliverables based on specific outcomes as opposed to how long you sit in the chair. I, I began my career, I apologize for saying in advance, as, as, as a practicing attorney 25, 30 years ago. And all of my value was built based on how many hours I was sitting in a chair ticking away the hours that we would bill our, you know, bill our clients and customers. I, I hated doing that then, and I'm sure all of you hate doing that kind of stuff now. And now it comes down to if you can get your work done and be productive and deliver what you need to deliver, you know, you're going to be happier and more productive. And, uh, you know, you're, you're going to be able to do great things for the business, but also do great things for your family and have a lot more time and a higher quality of life. And, and so these are the things that we're seeing you know, in our business that make this, uh, this work remote, the necessity, but it's, but making it easy and available and, and, uh, you know, showing that when you work at home, you can be as productive, you know, and, you know, without compromising the security. And that's the big thing. And, and right now, I think I'm really eager to hear what, you know, George thoughts on some of these, he's going to dive deeper into some of these great applications, these great tools that Rallyware has identified that can really help boost that productivity. You know, we can create the environment in which you work, but these tools that George is going to talk about now are, are the rally where it's discovered that are just fantastic tools that you can use. And George is really going to dive deeper into those. And I'd like to turn things over to George to learn a lot about these with the rest of you. So thanks for your time. And, and George, I'll, I'll turn it over now so we can really dig into these uh, specific productivity tools. Dave, Dave, I appreciate you sharing your expertise with us. And I, I was butting in on that earlier slide just to say um, that's why Rallyware is so fascinated with IOXO when you can see Dave's young daughter able to configure somebody's workstation to be able to work from home in seconds. It's uh, I think it's a testament to what you've put together from a functionality infrastructure efficiency standpoint. So thanks so much for um, sharing with us right now. We'll ask you to step back in once we uh, get to Q&A. But now, as Dave just alluded to, I would like to take this opportunity to introduce my boss, the founder, the CEO of Rallyware. And uh, as you know, Rallyware is a performance enablement platform that can drive a lot of behavior in your workforce. But today, George is going to spend his time focusing on how you make that person who is now working remotely, working from home, that much more productive. So, George? Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, David, thank you very much for a great presentation. Uh, lots of helpful information on how to move uh, your empl employees uh, to, uh, to work remotely and how to set up their workstations and the whole infrastructure around it so that they are in the position uh, to be productive. It's so imagine you've done all that. Dave has helped you. Uh, you're in a great position. All your employees are ready to hit the ground running. And at the same time, uh, while all these things are extremely necessary and it's impossible to do uh, relevant work without it, uh, it just doesn't guarantee results yet. 
Why? Because it's very important to keep your people, to keep your employees as excited and as engaged as possible, especially more than ever during these difficult times. Imagine they have, uh, they have kids, uh, they're at home, family, multiple, uh, multiple distractions. God forbid someone is sick, especially in, the, in these times. There is a lot of things that are going on. So how do you actually get people to be uh, focused, to be engaged while working remote? We at Rallyware have been looking at remote work since 2012. We've done a lot of research, we've been, uh, and, and we've set a lot of companies uh, that are remote for success. So I'd like to uh, share our findings uh, on this today. In what we see is the companies that were good at engaging people who were working in the office or doing some remote work as well uh, before, they are very quick to adapt to the new realities and they come out very strong to, uh, uh, to enable people working and being engaged remotely. Yes, that requires a lot of changes in the processes. It requires a lot of quick adaptations. Uh, it requires you moving through the process of digital transformation a lot faster, but uh, that is a big factor that kind of makes the company differentiate. Another big factor that we're seeing is also trust. Trust from the kind of the very upper management into their managers, into the, uh, all the employees, trust that they're doing the work, trust that they are all engaged around the same idea, all engaged around the same passions and are all highly motivated to get the results. That trust when it exists in the office work environment, it very much transfers from what we're seeing, very much transfers into the remote work and it becomes even more important at that time. So today I would like to focus on three uh, very important, um, important aspects of uh, engaging in the remote work. These are the aspects of communication, training and collaboration. So, uh, let's start with the remote communication. So if we're looking at communication between and within teams, it's absolutely essential part of productivity when you're in the office or when you're not in the office. But when everybody is remote, it becomes even more relevant. What worked before, like going across the hall and, meet, uh, and asking a question from your, uh, from your colleague maybe meeting at lunch, just dialing an extension, all these things don't work anymore. So what can you do as an organization to help really get those communication channels in place faster and get them to be much more reliable? A couple of suggestions here. First, we really recommend establishing official communication channel. It doesn't mean that your employees cannot chat between themselves in, through any other channels, but what it means is that there is a default uh, channel where uh, you provide your information, you run your meetings, you get uh, people together. Different companies use different tools here, Slack, Microsoft Teams, uh, even email, anything uh, that you want to use uh, and adapt for your existing processes. Uh, will uh, work, just make sure that it actually really fits your process and make sure that everyone is aware that this, this is the right communication channel, at least for the official communication that we'll be getting from the management and for the communication that will be, uh, that uh, they're encouraged to communicate between each other. This is good for everyone to be on the same page but it's also good for keeping history and keeping kind of record of where the communication has been going. We internally at Rallyware, we use both, like we use a combination of uh, Slack platform and also our own uh, Rallyware tool. It's also very important to have uh, a reliable uh, video conference technology ready. And uh, our recommendation is to do as many um, uh, to switch to as many meetings through the video as possible. 
I know a lot of your employees are at home, so making it mandatory for them to turn on the video is not necessarily the right way to go, but encouraging everyone uh, to have the video ready and to be able to look into each other, uh, each other in the eyes is very, very important. Zoom has come out as, a, as an absolute leader in uh, this technology recently. Uh, primarily, I would say due to its uh, really UI UX capabilities, but there are other ways like Hangouts, Skype for Business, uh, Slack internally, many other things that you could effectively use for video conferencing. What's important is not just the tool, but how often you do this. Continue running your all hands meetings and run them more frequently than you would do it during the during the regular times in the office. The reason for that is just communication and the information is just the key. When there is an absence of information, people assume everything as being uh, everything is negative. So provide as much information as you can, be authentic as possible, build on that trust that you have with your employees and, uh, and build even more trust in, in this situation. Another very important uh, aspect is uh, water cooler conversations. Nothing can substitute running into someone in the office at the water cooler at lunch in the elevator and having a chat about the project, about life, about anything else. Unfortunately, in the remote work environment, uh, that does not uh, happen unless you create that environment. What we recommend here, and we do it internally, uh, and we see a lot of companies doing it very successfully, do coffee breaks or happy hours in a virtual environment, create, have a Zoom meeting where everyone can come in, share their uh, thoughts, feelings, maybe request help, and uh, just promote participation. Don't make it, don't make it mandatory because that could put even more stress on your, on your employees, but promote participation uh, in those meetings as much as you can. Collect feedback. Feedback is extremely important. Feedback will, make, uh, will help you very fast switch into a better environment, into a better way of uh, running remotely. Encourage that feedback. Doesn't really matter in what form you do it. It could be, Google Forms, it could be uh, some of the survey platforms, it could be through email, it could be even in the smaller companies, HR talking to people individually. <laughs> However you feel <coughs> works the best for you, but that feedback collection will help you transition from the office environment to the remote work much faster. Another very important aspect is rewards and recognition. When the crisis just hit a couple of uh, weeks ago and when it uh, looked uh, like a lot of the, uh, there was a lot of uncertainties and it was not clear how the economy is going to re react, even though it's still not clear on that way, but uh, a lot of communication was that, oh, the rewards and recognition that could be for many companies, they could think it's, uh, it is an optional thing. And uh, this is something that is probably at the time when everyone is contracting, it might become, uh, might, uh, might become a less important uh, aspect in reality what we're seeing companies very quickly realizing that this is absolutely critical part of engaging your remote workforces so rewards and recognition in any way you can both logistic wise and uh, uh, logistics wise budget wise and process wise is extremely important it's extremely also it's especially important for those companies that are planning to uh, use remote work not just as a temporary couple of weeks or uh, as long as we're in shelter in place measure, but more of a somewhat permanent or semi permanent state for the company. And interestingly, we're seeing quite a few companies exploring that possibility and moving to the remote or semi remote model. Next part I would like to talk is the training. 
and training is uh, training aspect is very dear to us at Rallyware. Uh, we run a lot of uh, the training uh, uh, programs uh, on our platform, and we can't emphasize it enough how critical and how important uh, training is during the time when uh, times of uncertainty and the times when everyone is working remotely. I will share some statistics that we're seeing early on in the next couple of slides, but let me talk about the importance of training right now. Uh, very important that training is timely and specific. This is even more critical than ever. Just using one size fits all uh, uh, training modules is not going to work. People are stressed in time. People are stressed uh, in terms of what's going on in the world. Uh, people will take, your employees will take things that are not relevant to them negatively at this point. So it's very different, important to use your training and whatever training platform you use to deliver just-in-time trainings, to deliver the trainings that are personalized and specific for their specific learning needs right at that point in time. Another uh, important thing is that people are very busy uh, at the moment uh, with the projects, with their families, with uh, a lot of thoughts, with the news, let's be frank about it, and they can't take a long time for the modules. So implementing micro learning, splitting your uh, learning initiatives into very short and digestible, uh, uh, digestible modules is going to go a long way for for you you can't really push like one hour long modules that are not engaging and that just require clicking clicking and clicking at least time and you can't also enforce that because you're not in the office you're not going to have an ability to come to your employee and tell them please complete that module there is no way for that so make sure you implement some elements of the micro learning uh, mobile learning uh first like you might think oh people are at home why would they want to uh to use mobile devices for their uh, for for their le uh, learning needs and that's a logical uh, thing to say but our data suggests very much otherwise we see increases of up to 30 to 40 percent in mobile usage of uh, uh for the training initiatives People, when people are at home, they're in all sorts of situations and everybody has different uh, conditions uh, at home. So if they can take mobile device and use it for training, it's great. They're going for a short walk around, the, uh, around their home and they can take their mobile device and just use it to complete a quick training module. This is great. So mobile learning is also more important uh, than ever. Uh, knowledge retention, those are always uh, important and those are not always fun. So it's, uh, it's very important to use the mechanisms to make uh, the learning retention initiatives fun. One way to do it is using uh, gamification for, uh, for your learning initiatives and uh, the game elements like points, badges, levels, or any other elements that you introduce, they invoke the positive emotions in people. Positive emotions is something we all need at this point. When you watch the news, when you uh, talk to other people, when you hear about someone you know or someone uh, your friends know getting sick or anything or losing their job is very, very stressful. So when you can provide some positive emotion and some excitement for people through gamification and through an ability to see how they're really doing and contributing, this is very, very useful. Uh, tracking progress analytics, uh, again, like at the time, always important, always critical, but having it real time and ability to adjust is uh, even more important in these critical times. You're not going to get all your programs and processes right, 
So uh, as much as collection of feedback, analytics also provides a lot of insights for you on how to uh, adjust your uh, your uh, remote processes, how to adjust your training modules and how to make it even more faster and more data driven. And the most uh, important thing is, I can't emphasize it enough, personalize, personalize, personalize. The more specific and more personal your learning, your training activities, uh, your tasks for the people are, the more valuable, uh, the more value you get. And uh, we all want to make sure everyone is on track with that engagement during those critical <coughs> times of working remote and during the critical times of global pandemic. Let's move to the next slide. So a uh, couple of uh, early statistics uh, that we are seeing from uh, the Rallyware programs that we're running. A lot of those programs are learning and development uh, and trainings, but also we'll share that Rallyware is becoming a central hub where our customers use us for quite a few other purposes. Uh, but in general, we are seeing uh, customers reacted very, very quickly and very, very well and we're seeing a 22% increase in the new content available. This, is, uh, this plays out very, very well. Content is not easy to create, even though we make it as easy as possible, and we recommend uh, not spending a lot of time on the actual, uh, on the actual production, uh, production of content in terms of uh, making it beautiful, but more spend time on the quality of that content. So we're seeing 22% of the increase in the content. And in return to that, we're seeing actually 160% growth in the number of active users and the number of people who are actually want to come in and learn and learn more and get, and get more things uh, uh, done while they are working remotely. And we're also seeing a 121 and 121% increase in the number of completed learning activities, which is very, also a very good sign. It shows people are engaged and they're open to learning more and they're opening to contributing more to the company, to the mission, to the values and to getting better. We're also seeing based on those programs, like we ran a study on across our direct selling customers. We're also seeing uh, improvements based on those, on, uh, on the metrics of increased um, uh, trainings uh, completions. We're also seeing improvements in the, um, uh, on the company level metrics in terms of better 10% better productivity for the sales uh, we, we're seeing for online sales 12% more production uh, transactions for those companies and about uh, 2x share of users who uh, actually within the direct selling companies made their uh, first online sales. Now I would like to talk a little bit more about the remote collaboration the building uh, the culture of innovation and uh, for companies that have already done that it's a, it's a they're a big step ahead uh, so growing and promoting your uh, culture of innovation and adjusting those uh, remote processes uh, and your culture for the specific uh, environment for the environment in the <clears throat> uh, of the remote work is especially important in that sense, that part where I talked about asking, collecting feedback, it's critical because that will help you um, get the new ideas, get the, promote them and get a lot of exciting uh, things into your process. Like people who are actually remote uh, right now, they will be the, your best resource to, uh, to tell you how to improve your um, your remote engagement. What are the better things to implement? What are your company specific innovations for the remote work that could be? And there will be a lot of very uh, company specific innovations coming out of different companies. Uh, don't forget to keep delivering soft skill trainings to your employees. Those are extremely important uh, at least times, just as important as the uh, relevant product and uh, skill uh, and uh, uh, the work skill training. So keep doing that. 
gamification i already talked about it makes people feel they're part of the larger community opens up positive emotions and opens up more opportunities for everyone to thrive within a company um, can we move to the next slide uh, so uh we uh, keep pushing like on the uh, have group chats direct chats discussion boards there can't be uh, too much communication at this point over communication is probably the number one thing to succeed in the remote environment and uh, there is no such thing as repeating things twice there's no such things as uh, spreading the information uh, the same information through different channels all of it is useful just keep uh keep getting uh keep getting those channels in place make sure that your leaders your uh managers are as aligned with the strategy as you are keep the leadership training and keep the communication with the leaders as much uh, as as close as possible and have the leaders to actually disseminate the information to the entire teams uh, this will uh, help the leaders emerge as even uh, uh, even stronger uh, within your companies and it will also help you streamline uh, the communication and one last thing on this topic is uh, implementing a smart uh, segmentation uh, for your uh, within your employee base especially for large companies make sure you're creating those cozy and fun communities through community structure to drive collaboration those communities could be based on their uh, on your geographies on people's geographies if you have multiple offices if this could be based on um, the uh, specific departments specific teams this could be based on specific interest or whatever other creative ideas you might come uh, up with but what's important is keep in mind that people are a lot more creative when they're in a small group. Usually four to seven people is, a, is an excellent group uh, to, have, uh, to have great ideas and to promote the innovative solutions and innovative ideas. So I hope this covers the um, kind of in a very quick way, uh, communications, training and collaboration. And I hope you've seen uh, some of the interesting things that you could implement at your uh, at your uh, at your uh, companies. Uh, I would like to briefly touch upon, like we put a small, not a comprehensive at all, collection of different tools and different um, uh, systems that you technologies that you can implement for your uh, businesses. Uh, and some of them are very well known, some of them are a little less. Uh, what's useful, what we're seeing is also there is a growing demand for kind of um, the central hub of different activities for central, for one platform where people can do as many things as possible. So we've been trying to accommodate that uh, within Rallyware and uh, Rallyware while has been traditional and primarily used for uh, as a uh, as a performance enablement platform where you can provide activities uh, to different uh, to your all your different employees and independent workforces and those could be onboarding training continuous engagement or operational activities we're seeing increased usage in uh, it, uh, of Rallyware is a communications tool. A lot of the rewards and recognition work uh, is being done, like kind of our gamification engine is used for that. We're seeing a, it as a productivity tool. You could use it to store and kind of spread the files through the digital library and have the, all the analytics available to you through the, uh, through the dashboards. Thank you, and uh, this is uh, this is it for the brief overview for me. We'll be happy, both David and I will be happy to answer any questions and provide any help from our expertise as much as possible. Thank so, you. So yes, thank you very much, George, for um, sharing, and that was very insightful. Um, Dave, if you could come back online with us now, we've got a couple questions that. Uh, 
from the attendees. And for those of you, because we have so many right now, for those of you that we don't get to right now, we will make sure that we circle back with you and get you those answers that you need, because I see a number of them that are a little bit more technical in nature, especially for our IOXO. But let's start with this one. So um, we've got from one of our attendees out there, what are the biggest challenges you see? Or let's, let's say for each of you. So what is the biggest challenge that you can identify when companies are shifting their workplace to remote? So Dave, we'll let you start from an infrastructure standpoint. Maybe I'll ask you what the number one challenge out of companies that you're working with, clients that you've seen make that transition. Um, what's the number one challenge that you would identify for the group? Yeah, I think the, the first and biggest challenge is, is, is the how. Uh, I think for the vast majority of companies, this is a new challenge. There are a lot of companies out there that have, that have dabbled in virtual desktops or dabbled in cloud computing. But when you're talking about the mass exodus of your workforce to work from home, the biggest challenge is, well, how are we going to do that? How are we going to support and manage that? We don't have the staff for that. And not only that, it's also when you, when you add the how, it's we don't have the budget for that. As I mentioned during my presentation, a lot of folks, you know, companies are scrambling trying to buy laptops, but you just can't send laptops home because Typically speaking, a company would have to image those laptops and secure them with encryption and virus protection. There's a, there's a lot of, you know, a lot of businesses have some very proprietary security things that they have to worry about. So, you know, the first one is, how do we have a plan? Normally when this occurs, it occurs over weeks or even a couple of months, or, you know, we plan in January to migrate everybody over by June or July for larger organizations. But when you're saying we have to have everybody home this week, like, you know, we just got the state, like we, if you're, you know, I live in Utah and, you know, we've had, a, we literally were one of the first companies in the county that I live in, for example, which is Summit County. We were one of the first counties that was, was pretty much had a stay at home order. So we didn't have a week or two weeks to figure this out. It was, we had to go now. Well, fortunately we were ready. So I think it's one, they're really in this crisis scenario, there wasn't the time to have a cohesive plan put in place, number one. Number two, one, once they figured out, even if they knew how to do it, it was automatically going to be a big budget hit because integrating and helping people transition was going to be a heavy lift in terms of IT staff or managed service providers to help. So it's, 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 it's the how, and then it's the how the budget. And then it was so many issues about how do we manage endpoints and devices and really worry about the security. So I think if you put them in priority, as pe even when people get to, this is how we're going to do it, there's the whole other of, well, how do we, now that we know how and we're gonna spend the money, how do we make sure that we don't harm the business by creating too many security vulnerabilities by doing it? And I think in probably that order, that's the things that I see that businesses are really struggling with right now. I appreciate that. Yeah, you talk about the suddenness of how all this happened. Um, we've got a company we're working with in New York and New York City in particular. So they were all at home and on Sunday evening, corporate put out the mandate that everybody would start working remotely on Monday. So uh, that was the most sudden notification I've heard across our client base there. So now we've got a move to George. What is the, what's the number one issue that we have seen maybe from a people standpoint, um, that biggest challenge as far as um, those remote workers? I would say uh, we see the number one challenge is the communication. Uh, the right proper communication, uh, both from the leadership to the teams and communication between and within teams. Again, like, first of all, the messaging, as I already said, like, in the absence of information, uh, people assume all sorts of things, especially things that uh, could be negative. Uh, so always communicate whether good or bad news and make sure that communication goes across and make sure that uh, communication is explained. Like when uh, it's have more on hands uh, meetings, have more, uh, people participate like whatever in the like when you're in the office whatever could be solved with the 
you know, small chat or just basically just a conversation or just looking into at you and making and seeing that like your comment things are fine. Those things are not present when everybody is at, working from home. So make sure that you over communicate. Yeah, uh, I, like, I like that. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Part didn't mean to is ability to get a hold of someone. This is very practical. Like uh, in the in the office, you walk to someone and you you're talking in the office. Like you tell them, "Oh, I need you." Uh, they will not leave the office until they talk to you. Uh, doesn't happen uh, in the remote uh, environment. Also, what happens is people have more calls because of the uh, because they need to discuss things between themselves. So it's much more difficult to get onto someone's schedule because they're having more calls. So here it's like pre-scheduling uh, communication, having maybe more frequent one-on-ones with, uh, with, with your teams is, is very, very important. And then a balance of kind of being informed versus that uh, uh, autonomy like autonomy of like people like working when they're uh, like feel valued when they're not pressed when they're not pressured so kind of keeping that balance between informing them but not making it seem like it's a micromanagement so i i would imagine too that communication uh you know, it varies also whether I'm the individual coworker or whether I'm the manager there, correct? Absolutely, absolutely. And that's why the trainings, uh, especially like diff for different groups, especially manager training is extremely important. And that's why introducing those initiatives and training, providing the learning opportunities for people on the new and evolving processes of uh, remote work for the company are very, very useful. So we've got less than five minutes left. I'm going to ask one more question from the group. Um, so Dave, we'll start one more time with you. Um, from your looking into the crystal ball post COVID-19, what do you think the biggest carryover effect will be for businesses from what we've implemented during the crisis and what do you think will carry over post crisis? Yeah, you know what? I think our lives are gonna change. I think the biggest carryover is going to be that every business is gonna have to have this life work balance. I think a lot of barriers have come down too. Like, you know, we were joking before about you know, doing video conferences and having my child run into the room, and, you know, all that kind of stuff. And those things are becoming more normal now. I think that, I think you're going to see people adapt. I think businesses and people are going to expect that I should be able to be productive no matter where I am. If I'm at the beach, if I'm at home, if I'm in the office, I need to have everything in the tool bag with me, no matter what, wherever I am but without compromising security. I mean, IOXO first and foremost is a security company as it relates to businesses and handling all of this, okay? But I think that new life work balance where businesses give a little, people give a little, where we all realize that we've got to have this flexibility in place, I think that's the biggest thing that will change. And the old, you just have to get to the office under all circumstances, I think that's something that's going to go away. Yeah, I want to say that, um, thanks for those thoughts, but you alluded to the fact that you and George both uh, today are presenting with family at home. So I'm sort of disappointed that I didn't hear any of the kids in the background from either of you. Well, mine are locked in the closet, so that's okay. <laughs> I mean, uh, don't so tell George, me that, George, but... I'm going to let you, I'm going to let you have the last word here. Yeah. Um, from your perspective on, from driving productivity in that workforce, what do you think the biggest change might be for companies out there after this crisis? I think the biggest change uh, we will see is the difference between uh, great and not so great companies. Uh, because, you know, like think about it, of it as like people relationship. Like you're, when you go through something difficult together, your relationship becomes much stronger and your friendship becomes much stronger. And, uh, and together you could do a lot of uh, great things. I think the same way with companies. Companies that pay attention 
uh, to their people to engage in them, to making sure they're safe, healthy, and comfortable at home will come out as uh, big winners of, uh, in this situation. And companies that uh, don't pay as much attention to this are actually going to lose quite a bit and losing in this environment is really, really not a good idea. So in that sense, I think great companies will become my, uh, will be those that are much more supportive to their employees and much more, um, much stronger at aligning everyone on the same page, much stronger at developing trust with their people. And as a result, they become much more innovative. And innovation is what is going to take all of us out of this crisis. That's a great, that's a great focus. So I would like to once again thank both Dave and George for sharing their insights with us today. Uh, we are at the top of the hour, and I just want to say sort of in echoing George's statement from all of us at Rallyware, we would like you to focus on staying safe and being healthy. So hopefully you'll be able to apply some of these ideas you've heard from our uh, presenters today and make your work from home employees more efficient, effective, safe, and productive. So. Until next time, thanks very much, everybody. Have a great day. Thanks all. Thank you.